welcome back. Hey, good morning, Tigers. Welcome to another wonderful week at Pensacola High School. A couple of updates. As everyone knows, on January 19th, we will have several of our remote students returning to face-to-face -face instruction here at Pensacola High School. This is a mandate that came down from the Department of Education, and a letter was sent out to several students and parents who were not making adequate academic progress. So we're welcoming back some of our students on January the 19th. Seniors, you only have about five more months left, so we want to make sure that you are aware of all of the events that are coming up. Make sure that you're paying your fees and fines, returning uniforms, or anything else that might hinder you from graduating. Our graduation coordinator, Dean Machado, will update you as we go, and more information will be forthcoming very soon. Student activities. Several students have been asking about student activities. As of today, and uh, until further notice, proms, dances, balls, carnivals, whether on campus or all off campus, are on hold. Also, just want to inform everyone of our new personnel here at Pensacola High School. We will have a new school data specialist, Ms. Melva Knight. We have a new math teacher, and Mr. Charles Dix. Also, another math teacher, Mr. Kenneth DeVico. And, of course, we've hired our new head football coach, Mr. Cedric Smith. Also, to inform everyone, we will have two college interns on campus. One will be working with Ms. Navarro, and one will be in Ms. Watkins' class. After meeting with the superintendent a couple of weeks ago, I've been informed that he will be visiting our school shortly, and he'll be visiting our classrooms. He wants to get information from our students and stakeholders and faculty and staff in the upcoming weeks, and there will be a portal on the Scammy County School System website of a survey uh, where you can give your comments to Dr. Smith, give your input, as well as when he comes and visit our campus, he'd be glad to talk to all of you. Good morning, Tigers. I want to welcome everyone back to our first week of the second semester. I want to welcome all of our remote students who are now going to be traditional students this week. I want to let our students know who are coming to Pensacola High School for the first time that we have some very strong expectations for both your behavior and for COVID safety. I want to talk first about the COVID safety. Um, if you have any symptoms, whether it's fever symptoms or any symptoms of illness, you will be asked to self-quarantine. So if you come to school and you have any symptoms of illness, your teachers will send you to the clinic and you'll be asked to self-quarantine. If you're ever exposed to anyone who has tested positive for COVID-19, you will also need to quarantine. You'll need to then let your counselor or an administrator know that you've been exposed to someone who's positive, and then again, you'll quarantine for a duration of time. It's very important for you to communicate that information to us, because that's the only way that we'll be able to make sure that everyone on campus is safe. We also have the expectation of having your mask on from the time you arrive to campus to the time that you leave. You'll also notice in the hallways that you will see traffic signs to make sure that you're on the right side of the hallway to avoid kids from cluttering inside the uh, hallways. Also during lunch, you'll notice we have outside seating and inside seating. We do ask that you please spread out during lunch and that you try to social distance as much as you can during the time that you're not in school. You'll also hear from our discipline team to talk about our non-negotiables, our behavior expectations for starting the semester, and to just answer any questions about parking, attendance, or tardies, earbuds, cell phones, just those essential things that we have at our school. So again, we want to welcome everybody back, and we also want to make sure that our new students are focused on the matters at hand. I also want to announce that beginning February 1st, we will have school-wide tutoring after school. This tutoring will take place beginning at 3.30 on the school days. You will notice that your teachers will begin talking to you this week about the needs and what the expectations are for tutoring. But essentially, that time is set aside for you to uh, make up classwork, for you to get additional support um, from any subjects that you're struggling in, for you to be able to do um, IA work, work on practice assessments, or even just to learn some of those skills that you need to be uh, proficient on the end of course exams. So our core content teachers are most certainly going to be offering tutoring. And then some of your workforce teachers or some of your elective teachers may also opt to have tutoring time. This tutoring will take place during the months of February and March. Talk to your teachers this week about their availability for tutoring. Because again, it is something that we're going to offer face-to-face -face and virtually. 
If you're a student who needs to come to the face-to-face -face tutoring and you need transportation, please stop by my office so we can accommodate you. We want to make this available for every student that needs it. So whether you're a ninth grade student that is struggling in English or you're an IB senior that just needs some extra time um, for one of your classes, make sure you utilize this time after school to be able to get support that you need from your teachers. And again, if you have questions about it, talk to your teachers this week, but also see any of the administrators for additional information. That will start on February 1st. Lastly, we will have night school beginning next Monday, January 25th. Um, students, if you failed any course from first semester, please make sure you talk to your counselors about getting signed up for night school. This session, we will offer night school for English, science, and math. So if you failed any of those courses, you made a D or an F, you can take time to make up that time during night school. So talk to your counselor if you failed any courses. And as always, go Tigers. Hello Tigers and happy third nine weeks. Welcome back from the long weekend. I hope that you are rested and ready to go. Um, I have a few announcements this week as well as next week. We will be doing IB 101 and 201 for the freshmen and sophomores. Mrs. Uh, Powers Crispell will come into the classroom and give you some much needed information. This will also be recorded and sent out to students and parents so that you can refer to it in the future. Today is History Fair. It will be held virtually, so good luck to all of the participants. Um, we are planning to have our CAS Fair March the 30th. More details will come from Mrs. Alihio on that. And lastly, we are still accepting applications, paper applications, um, which are on our website. You can also stop by the IB office and grab one. This is for current 8th graders, ninth graders, and 10th graders. If you are still interested in being part of the program, we would love for you to fill out an application. Good morning, Tigers, and welcome to quarter three. Um, some of you may have missed exams, and you may be wondering, how do I make those exams up? You should be getting information today about whether or not you are testing on tomorrow, Tuesday, or Wednesday of this week. Um, if you want to make other accommodations, um, please see me directly or one of your counselors. And if you are at home in quarantine and still need to make up your exams, don't worry, we will find a way to get you your exams when you return to us. Um, also, if you are looking at your grades for quarter two and you notice that you have earned a D or an F, it is imperative that you talk to your counselor, as Mr. Freeman said, to get signed up for night school. Um, especially, let me urge you, if you are a junior or a senior and you have failed courses, you really need to reach out to your counselor to determine the best course of action. Seniors, I cannot emphasize enough that this is crunch time. We really need to have a plan if you are not earning the credits that you need for graduation. Um, unfortunately, the state is standing firm in that you must meet all of your graduation requirements to graduate this year. So please get in contact with Ms. Calloway if you have any concern that you are... Hello Tigers, I'm Dean Summer Demille Machado and I see students whose last names begin H through O. The first ticket that I'll be talking about is the dress code ticket. Students will receive a dress code ticket when they are not in compliance with the R&R &R Handbook's dress code policy and Pensacola High School's dress code requirements. Students must wear shoes, shirts over tube tops and spaghetti straps, belts with shorts and pants, and head coverings are only for religious purposes and medical reasons. Students are not permitted to wear slippers, underwear is outerwear, pajamas, mini skirts, mini dresses, or short shorts. Students cannot expose their torso or midriff or wear anything that has drugs, alcohol, or is sexual in nature, or provides gang violence, or anything that might disturb the learning environment. Students are permitted to wear rips in their jeans. However, they need to have dark leggings or tights underneath. And if the rips are in the upper thigh area and expose the skin, those are not permitted at all. Hemlines for dresses and skirts and jumpers should be fingertip length. Students cannot wear anything that 
is not in the R&R handbook, including wallet chains. Students, please understand that if you receive a dress code ticket, you will be sent to the dean's office. And if you cannot provide a change of clothes, you will spend the remainder of the day in ISS. The next ticket that I'm going to be talking about is the refocus ticket. A refocus ticket is a timeout from the classroom. A teacher would send a student to the dean's office for a timeout. Failure to report to the dean's office for any ticket would mean that the student might have a, an additional consequence. Students may spend the remainder of the period in the dean's office for a refocus ticket. Attendance. Students' attendance is necessary in order for you to succeed in your classes and graduate. Students who are absent from class and on campus will receive a discipline referral. Students who are absent must submit an absence verification form within three school days after the absence to the attendance clerk. Excessive absences will result in a phone call home or a social worker visit. All missed work from any absence must be requested by the student, parent, or guardian either during the absence or on the day the student returns to school. Excused absence, absence work excuse me, may be submitted without penalty when the student returns or at a time agreed upon by the teacher and student not to exceed the days that they have been absent. Unexcused absences work is determined by the teacher and the student not to exceed the days that are absent. But it's at the teacher's discretion that they grade the classwork and tests, and they may be accepted for partial credit with no more than one letter grade reduction or full credit for unexcused absences. Remote expectations. Students are still attending classes remotely and they are subject to consequences. Our administration expects all students to follow the core policies and procedures in the R&R handbook while on school property when participating in school sponsored activities and during remote instruction. Students participating in remote learning who exhibit tier one behavior such as drug use or fighting will be immediately disconnected from the classroom. A referral will be submitted. The student will receive a zero for the daily classwork and a parent conference either face to face or through a Google meet with administration and deans will be scheduled. The offense may include law enforcement. When a remote student is placed in OSS, he or she cannot remote into their classes for the assigned dates. They can receive up to 80% of the grades for their classwork. The following steps happen when remote learners exhibit minor infractions, such as not turning their camera or microphone on. Step one, a verbal warning and the student will be re redirected by the teacher. Step two, verbal warning and the teacher will redirect the student and make a parent phone call or contact. Step three, the camera and microphone will shut off via GoGuardian and the teacher makes parent contact. Step four, the camera and microphone are shut off via GoGuardian. A discipline referral will be submitted with previous incidents sent to a dean. The dean will work the referral and contact parents. The social worker will be sent to the home for signatures. Remote privileges are suspended up to three days for step four. Remote privileges are suspended up to five days for step five. Work assignments provided via Google Classroom. And for step five, an administrator will contact the parent to offer traditional classroom or virtual instruction to the student and remote learning may no longer be an option at this time. Good luck students. And as always, go Tigers. Good morning, I'm Miss Howard, the behavior coach at Pensacola High School. I'm here to talk to you about four different items. One of them is Safe Harbor. I would like to explain that. Safe Harbor is voluntarily turning in an item that is prohibited on campus. If you realize you have something on campus, be it a vape pen or a knife, 
lighter cigarettes and you realize you came to school with it, you need to take it to an adult, turn it in before it is before an adult realizes you have it and turn you in. The item needs to be turned in before an investigation begins and that is referred to as safe harbor. The likelihood of you having consequences for that are very slim. So please turn in any item you come to school with that you forgot you had and realize you have it before you were turned in by an adult or another student. The second item is social media. Social media is broadening daily. Um, a student's phone and Chromebook is allowed to be searched by deans, teachers, or, well, generally the SROs do not do it, but the deans will search your property to see if you have something on there that someone has reported. If you share, if you take pictures and share them on social media, a student can come to us and tell us that you're doing this, and that could be related to bullying, which is something I will talk about in a minute. Um, you cannot show any illegal pictures. You cannot share them and send them through social media. You cannot have them on your Chromebook. Remember that all of your items can be searched by the deans. As far as bullying goes, that is something that is a repeated action. Just one time somebody saying something to you is not considered bullying. It has to continue over a period of time and it is not allowed or tolerated at Pensacola High School. You need to report it to an adult or a dean, whomever you feel more comfortable reporting it to, and it will be thoroughly investigated. If you don't want to be identified as reporting it, there is a site on the home page of the school district where it's at the bottom of the page that is to report bullying. There is an icon there. Go on there. You are anonymously reported. It goes through the district to Mr. Williams, and then he assigns the case to someone to investigate. And then after investigating, we will decide if it's a valid bullying situation or not, and then further action will be taken if needed. Um, the other thing I need to talk to you about are tardy tickets. With tardy tickets, you are, you're marked tardy when you get to your classroom. When you have the fourth tardy in one period, they will send you to the dean's office or my office, which is upstairs, uh, with a tardy ticket. At that time, the tardy ticket now turns into after-school detention for two afternoons during the week. We usually have after-school detention on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, after that, any tardy you get during that nine weeks, you will be sent back to the dean's office, and it now becomes in-school suspension. So the next time, when you get your fifth tardy, you will have one day in ISS. If you get a, a sixth tardy, you're now going to have two days of ISS. So it continues to build throughout the nine weeks. Once the nine weeks is over, you start over again. If you have any questions about these items, you're welcome to talk to any dean or myself, and I am upstairs in room 54A. And go Tigers! Good morning, Tigers. I'm tasked today with speaking to you about a few things. First and foremost, I'd like to speak to you about weapons. Do not bring any of them of any kind onto this school. Weapons include, but not limited to, firearms, pepper spray, and knives of any kind. Also, it's not allowed for you to bring any type of drugs or narcotics onto this campus. If you do have prescriptions that you need to take, or Tylenol, or anything of that sort, you need to go down to the nurse's office. You're going to have to have the proper paperwork from your doctor, and the nurse will administer that um, medicine to you. If you do have any of these items on you that I've mentioned above and you notice them, go to your teacher, administrator, dean, or law enforcement officer and let them know immediately that you have them. If you do that, you fall what's called under safe harbor and you will not get in trouble for them. If it is found on you and you have not told a teacher, administrator, a dean, or law enforcement officer about them before the item is found, you will face discipline actions and you may be criminally charged because of those items. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Officer Green and she will speak to you about a few things. Good morning, Tigers. I want to talk to you about tobacco products. It is unlawful to bring or smoke any tobacco products here on campus. 18 and under, it is unlawful. If you are 18 and older, it is still unlawful, although you can possess those items. If you are caught with tobacco products, you will receive a civil citation. That citation is $25. If you do not pay that civil citation that within a lot of time, your license could be suspended. Your license can also be suspended if you have not even received your license. You will also receive a referral from your dean. Fighting. If you're caught fighting here on campus, 
you were charged with a misdemeanor crime of an affray. With that, you will receive a civil citation if you qualify, and if you do not qualify, an affidavit for your arrest will be issued at a later date. You will also receive a referral from your dean, and you will be suspended from school. There is also a hearing that you will face in the near future. Civil citations are issued to students who commit misdemeanor crimes. If you do not qualify for a civil citation, an affidavit for your arrest will be issued at a later time. And as always, go, go Tigers! Tigers. Hello, I'm Dean Teeley. I'm athletic director and uh, dean for Pensacola High School for the last names beginning A through G. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about four things at the dean's office and then a little bit about athletic administration. Uh, first of all, transportation. So uh, welcome back to the third quarter of Pensacola High School. If you have not been riding a bus, you need to have a bus ticket. Um, if you show up at your bus stop in the morning, the bus will bring you to Pensacola High School. It will not return you at the end of the day unless you have a bus ticket. So do not wait to the end of the day. At the beginning of the day, as soon as you get on campus, come to the dean's office. Tell us you have a bus ticket issue, and that gives us time to resolve it so that you can get home. The second thing that I'm going to talk to you about is adverse impact. Um, if you're away from Pensacola High School, and if you get caught up into something that becomes a felony charge, you can be removed from Pensacola High School uh, for the safety of our school and for the integrity of our school. Uh, so realize that you're a Pensacola High School tiger uh, on campus and off campus, and there are some things that you can do off campus that will deny you the right to be on campus. There would be a hearing on this, uh, you know, so you would have an opportunity to state your case, but understand that you, if you do something away from campus that adversely impact Pensacola High School's education, you could remove from that. The third thing that I'm going to talk about is fighting. Um, there are certain things on Pensacola High School's campus that you can get in trouble with and you have the school sitting here and you have uh, the Pensacola Police Department or law enforcement sitting here and if you have a fight that is a one time where both of these entities can become involved with that. We do not tolerate fighting at Pensacola High School. Um, we'll listen to the story. We'll have 62 cameras on campus. More often than not, we have it on film. We'll look at this. Uh, it doesn't matter who starts it. If you are an active participant in the fight, you are a fighter. And we would do 10 days removal from high school, out of school uh, 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 suspension. And then at that time, we'd have a hearing. You would, if in a worst case scenario, you would be removed from Pensacola High School for the rest of the current school year, as well as the next. And on top of that, you could possibly catch a charge from law enforcement, which they'll speak separately. But again, that's a one incident that if you do that, you could have two different things going on the school and uh, the law enforcement with that. The fourth thing from uh, the dean's office uh, that I'm going to speak with you about is cell phone tickets. Um, a couple years ago, there was a school shooting in the southern part of the state. Um, 17 people were killed. Okay, they, uh, Law enforcement came and did a presentation to all schools uh, on campus, and it was determined that when they studied the video of this, there was kids walking down the hallway, guns were going off, but kids had earbuds in, they're on, the, they're on their cell phones, and they couldn't hear the shooting. They could not hear people screaming to get out of the hallway, and so it's a safety issue for that. In the classroom, there was one instance where there was one student facing the outside of the classroom, outside the window, had earbuds in on their cell phone, and the whole class is in the corner of the room, and the shooter came to the window of the, of the door and shot that student and killed that student in the middle of the classroom because they had earbuds in and they had that, that cell phone on. So those are the reasons why on our campus you can't use a cell phone, can't charge a cell phone, can't use it, period. Teachers, if they want students to use their cell phone for some reason, they have to get written permission from the principal before they can tell their class to do it. So understand the consequences of that. The last thing is I'm the athletic director. We're getting ready for spring sports. Um, if you've joined a club and that's all you've done, uh, you've created an athletic clearance account, but you are not cleared for athletics. Come in and see me uh, for that so that you can practice, so that you can participate. If you have not done the athletic clearance, uh, if you go to the main page of Pensacola High School, click on Tiger Athletics, scroll down, you will see uh, athletic clearance. There's a website, takes you right to it, set up your account, it takes minutes. But come in and see me, I'll help you get cleared uh, for athletics and I'll help you any way I can. Go Tigers. And as always, Go Tigers!
welcome back Your dreams were your ticket out